So I think it is no secret that footballers today, they earn a lot of money. Now, of course, what is a lot of money, you may ask? Well, to me personally, if you're able to afford a brand new sports car every single week, you're not doing too bad for yourself. But of course, it is also no secret that some footballers earn way more than they probably should. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, we're gonna be looking at all 20 Premier League clubs from Arsenal all the way to Wolves. And I'm gonna be telling you who, in my opinion, is the most overpaid player in every single Premier League club. Of course, starting off with club number one, we're gonna be talking about Arsenal. Now, of course, Arsenal overpaying some of their players. It is a story that's been at the club since their mascot was an actual dinosaur. But of course, which player do I think is the most overpaid gunner at the moment in the squad? Unfortunately, it has to be their most expensive player in the club's history, Nicolas Pepe. I'm sorry, but 140 thousand pounds a week for a player that's gotten zero assists and only one goal in the Premier League this season, only 10 Premier League appearances. Are you serious? Nicolas Pepe has not lived up to the expectations that he should have at Arsenal. Yes, he was okay last season, but to earn the kind of money that he is, it's an absolute crime that he's getting away with and definitely, I think, a strong way to start off this list. Club number two is going to be Aston Villa. Now, I'm not going to lie, this one kind of scrambled my brain a tiny bit because I don't necessarily think that Aston Villa over pay any of their players. For example, they've only got one player in their squad that they pay over 100,000 a week and that is Danny Ings. Now of course although I could mention him for this video because he hasn't been on top goal scoring form this season. At the end of the day he is a 20 goal a season kind of Premier League striker. We've seen it on multiple occasions and as much as I do kind of want to mention him it just unfortunately has to be Bertrand Traore. A player who can be absolutely magnificent on his day. You can see that Burkina Faso magic from him from time to time but unfortunately only six appearances so far from him this season to be one of the top earners in the squad with £78,000 a week. Unfortunately, as much as I think he is a great player to be amongst the top of the salary earners in the club, it's a bit too much. I'm not saying that he couldn't be there one day, but at the moment, I don't think he's quite there. Now, the third club we're going to be talking about, it's going to be a slightly interesting one as it is going to be Brentford Football Club. And the reason I say it's interesting is... I know it's kind of a wimp way out of it, but I'm not going to mention anyone for Brentford. Yes, I know, I know, don't boo me for it. I know it kind of defeats the whole purpose of the video. You can say that again. For every single Premier League club, but at the end of the day, the highest earning player at Brentford is earning £25,000 a week. That's not a lot of money in modern day football, and I'm not going to be picky about it because I also feel like that goes against the point of this video. I don't believe that Brentford are overpaying any of their players in their squad, so I'm not going to mention any players, okay? Sir, yes, sir. We move from Brentford to Brighton, just like good old Neil Mape, although he's not the player I'm going to be mentioning. It has to unfortunately be Adam Lallana with with £90,000 a week. I just cannot put in my head the fact that Adam Lalana makes four times the amount of money than a player like Basuma. A player who's been linked to multiple European giants over the last year or two. Look, nothing bad against Adam Lallana. I think he's a brilliant player. Obviously, he is past his prime. He's currently 33 years old. And if he was still making that, if he was making 90000 at Liverpool, I think that would be a great deal. But obviously, let's be honest, Brighton don't have the same money as Liverpool. Brighton on hot Liverpool. No, no. He's got a point. So things vary depending from club to club. So although it would have been okay at Liverpool, I don't quite agree with it at Brighton and the fact that by a long shot, he is Brighton's highest earning player in their squad. £90,000, I don't think Lallana is the kind of player to be an absolute difference maker for Brighton. And because of that, I don't think he should be their highest earner by a long shot. I think he's a good player, but 90000 is a bit much. Burnley Football Club is next. And once again, a kind of tricky team to talk about considering before this video, I thought Burnley players were paid with a pint and fish and chips after every single game and then Sean Dyche would eat the cutlery afterwards. But of course, looking at Burnley in terms of their players, no, they don't play them an extreme amount, but I have to mention the likes of their fullback Peters. Look, to be their third highest earning player, uh, I think is absolutely mind-boggling considering, considering it's been a long time since he's been a starter in that 
that team, £48,000 a week, considering he's up there with the likes of Ben, Mee and Tarkowski in terms of earners for the club. He's absolutely got no rights to get there. Look, obviously Tarkowski and Ben Mee would defend their positions relatively well in the top spots, but Peters, once again, he's one of those players where every single time he plays, which is very rare these days, I hear the commentator talk about his mistakes. He makes mistakes on the pitch. He's not a very good player, and to be amongst the top earners, it's a bit embarrassing. Next up, we've got the highest earning player so far, and of course, you have to expect it because we're going to be talking about Chelsea next. Now, although I do want to mention an honorable mention with Romelu Lukaku, a player who earns £325,000 a week. So what now? Obviously, he hasn't been brilliant in the Premier League for them so far, but he's not going to be the player I mentioned for kind of one reason. I think he's a major part in winning Chelsea the Club World Cup. Obviously, scored in the semi-final, scored in the final. At the end of the day, say what you want about good old Romelu Lukaku, but he's helped Chelsea win a trophy, which is a lot more than the likes of Sewell. Obviously, the player they have on loan from Atletico Madrid for £198,000 a week. I don't know why they're being picky about the number. It's essentially £200,000 a week. He's played all the Champions League games so far from what I've seen. But only six Premier League games, zero goals, zero assists. To pay £200,000 a week for a player who's only made six Premier League appearances. Disgusting! I mean, how he's managed to do that, I mean, credit to him. That's great money for minimal work. But at the end of the day, that has to go ahead of Romelu Lukaku in terms of overpaid players at this club. From Chelsea, we then head on to Crystal Palace next. Now, although you get players like, obviously, Wilfred Zaha, you would expect to be the highest paid player in the squad. And he is, rightfully so. But under him, looking at the likes of Christian Benteke, I'm very tempted to mention him. Because £120,000 a week for Christian Benteke to... Let, let's just say exist, because let's be honest, his job at the moment isn't to score goals. But at least from time to time, he ends up doing something with the player that I have to mention for Crystal Palace. He's done absolutely nothing for this club. And for £80,000 a week, it has to be Nathaniel Klein, the second former Liverpool player I'm going to mention in this video. But £80,000 for a player who, are, over the last two seasons combined, has made 16 appearances for Crystal Palace in total, in all competitions, which is just the Premier League for him. To earn £80,000, I mean, I think he's living his best life at the moment. But Crystal Palace, that's, that's a tiny bit of an odd one, to be honest. Next up, we're going to be talking about the Toffees. Obviously, the Toffees, tough to chew, and I think that's a great way to explain Everton's season. And believe it or not, a team that absolutely splashes the cash all over the place that is currently close to the relegation zone, I've got a few problems with them. And this is actually going to be the first team I mention, or the only team in this list, where I'm going to mention two players, because it is that bad at Everton. First of all, for Yeri Mina to earn £120,000 a week, their highest earner, and let's Let's be honest, Yeri Mina is not a brilliant centre-back. In fact, I thought he was a dancer for the Colombian national team before I realised he was a footballer. At the end of the day, Yeri Mina moving from Barcelona to Everton, now earning £120,000. Once again, bit of a weird one from Everton, but unfortunately Everton, in my opinion, one of the poorest... English motherfucker, do you speak it? Yes. Or poorest run clubs in the Premier League, so I'm not too surprised, but definitely overpaid. And same goes for the likes of another former Barcelona player, with Andre Gomez own, earning 112000 a week. I mean, between him and Mina, what's that? 235000 a week. That is absurd for two players that are not regulars in this Everton team. So, I mean, together, they haven't even accumulated the amount of games Everton have played this season. I mean, that is shocking, the amount of money that they've earned. So, the fact that, I mean, I, I'll just put this out there that's probably the best business Barcelona have done in the last 10 years he's out of line but he's right Leeds United is next now once again not necessarily a team that splashes the cash all over the place in terms of salaries but the player I've gone for it is going to be the likes of Rodrigo yes only 58,000 pounds a week I know that's not a lot in the modern era of football but one of the top earners at Leeds and I'm going to say this and yes I might get a lot of hate for it but I don't understand the whole fuss about Rodrigo when he came from Valencia to Leeds United became the club's most expensive player of all time 
I just don't get it. People consider him a world-class attack or striker. He's played for the Spanish national team in the Liga for many years, but he's only had one season in his senior career with more than 10 league goals a season. I don't know about you, but I'm not necessarily impressed by that stat. Three goals and one assist in the Premier League this season. Once again, I just don't consider him a super top player. I think he can be decent for Leeds from time to time, but to be one of their top earners, it's a uh, yeah, I don't necessarily agree with it. As I said, £58,000 a week is not the most of modern day football so if it was another club i'll totally understand it but where leads are at and how they play pay some of their players i think someone like calvin phillips earns like twenty five thousand a week and that is shocking to compare to rodrigo so yeah i don't quite understand rodrigo which by the way guys if you do want me to do a reverse video version of this where i talk about the most underpaid players at each premier league club hit the like button down below if we get this video to 20 likes i will do that along with subscribing down below it does help the channel channel out and yeah next club Liverpool is going to be the next club and ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, or Roy Hodgson or whatever you choose to identify being. You guys say Colorado. Liverpool might be one of the easiest clubs on this list as it has to be Thiago with £200,000 a week. £200,000. I cannot even contemplate making that amount of money within the next 20, 30, 40 years of my existence. Maybe even my life. £200,000 a week is absurd for a player who, let's be honest, has been extremely underwhelming for Liverpool in the last two seasons he's been at the club. This season, yes, he's definitely improved, but a £200,000 player to earn double what Sadio Mane does for the club. I just can't back that. We go from one extremely expensive player to another because next we've got Manchester City. Now, believe it or not, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, Manchester City have been teased from time to time in terms of overpaying for players. No way! But it has to be Jack Grealish. Now, I am really hurt about this. I was a huge fan of Jack Grealish. I think he could have become an absolute legend for Aston Villa. He would have gotten a statue, but now £300,000 a week for Man City. Look, I don't think you'll complain about that part, but only four co uh, goal contributions in the Premier League this season. Two goals, two assists for £300,000 a week. I don't know about you, but in my opinion, that is definitely not worth it. We go from the blue side of Manchester to the red side, as it is going to be Manchester United next. Uh, my team, unfortunately, and I'm not going to lie, I could go through the entire team at this rate. Like, I'll probably put up a list on screen, and I could go through every player in that squad and why they are overpaid. Look, even looking at Cristiano Ronaldo, for example, £500,000 a week at his age. Yes, it is a bit extreme in my opinion, especially because he's not going to put out the numbers that he once used to. But at the end of the day, he is the reason we're still in the Champions League, and he will make that money back for the club in terms of jerseys. So, all's fine at the end of the day. <laughs> True. David De Gea makes a lot of money, but I mean, he saved Manchester United for the last 10 years. He deserves a statue at this rate. But looking at our captain, of course, it always has to be Maguire, 190 thousand pounds a week for a center back who yes the most expensive center back of all time in world football let's be honest he is a meme although he scored versus Leeds United the other night let's be honest has not been a good player for Manchester United barely deserves to break the 100 mark so the fact that he's almost at 200 thousand pounds a week that's absolutely absurd I wouldn't say he deserves it whatsoever I mean it's it's absolutely criminal we move from Manchester United to the richest club in world football Newcastle United once again, still mind-boggling to think about that fact. But of course, looking at Newcastle United becoming the richest club in world football, I'm sure that their salary numbers will go up and up as time goes on. But in the meantime, it has to be their Swedish defender, Kraft, which with a name like Kraft, I think in terms of a salary, he's done more damage to Newcastle United with £58,000 a week. To be one of their top earners is extraordinarily weird considering the fact at Newcastle United, he's never played more than half the league appearances for Newcastle United, meaning I think the most league appearances he's had in a season for New, uh, Newcastle United is 17. So he's never played a full season of games for Newcastle United, not even half a season for them. So the fact that He's one of their top earners. Once again, can't understand it whatsoever, but I do think Newcastle United are in slightly better financial position nowadays. Norwich City is going to be next, and it is going to be a player on loan from Manchester United. I know, once again, mind-boggling. We've moved past Man United. We've spoken about their financial problems, and we're still talking about a United player. As Norwich City on loan to Norwich from Manchester United, Brandon Williams is earning 65 
thousand pounds a week which yes i think brandon williams is a brilliant young player i think he's got a bright future ahead of him but the fact that he is norwich's highest earning player and he's only manchester united's third choice left back once again he's got a bright future ahead of him but to earn sixty-eight thousand pounds a week as a third choice left back it's a bit of an odd one we then move on to the likes of Southampton. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what I said about Thiago at Liverpool being an obvious one earlier, I take that all back. This might be the obvious one, not just in the Premier League, in the entire world, as it is going to be Theo Walcott for Southampton with £75,000 a week. The fact that people still believe, look, I'm sure he's a lovely guy, nothing personal against him, but I think Arsenal would have been better off if they picked Jeremy Lynch instead of Theo Walcott. Because they said, on the ball, you're the best at the whole club, including the first team. Why the fuck you lying? Looking at Theo Walcott, he has not lived up to the hype. I don't know what Southampton saw in him. Looking at Theo Walcott, in the last seven years of his career, in the last seven seasons, the most goals he scored in a Premier League season is five. And the most assists he's gotten in a single season is two. In the last seven years in the Premier League for Theo Walcott. Once again, for a player like that to be the highest earning player in any club in world football, once again, I don't know how it happens. Tottenham Hotspurs is next. Now, of course, mentioning it a tiny bit earlier in the beginning of the video, looking at a player who's won multiple golden boots for a club, he deserves to be the highest played player for a club. Looking at Harry Kane, to earn £200,000 a week makes 100% sense for Heung-Min Son, Hoiberg, players like that to be amongst the top earners in the club. That makes sense. But when you dive, uh, dive deeper into things, to see the likes of Ben Davies earning £60,000 a week once again. Ben Davies, a player who had so much promise behind him, but nowadays, when Spurs get the chance, they'll put the likes of Doherty in a left-back position. And Doherty's not even a good right-back in his original position. So the fact that Ben Davies is still in this Tottenham Hotspurs team, once again, that alone I don't understand. And to earn £60,000 a week, once again, I don't think he's the kind of player who deserves more than £50,000 a week at most. Moving on from Spurs, we're still going to talk about a player who is from Spurs as we have Watford next. And in my opinion, the most overpaid player at Watford is going to be Spurs legend Musa Sissoko with £80,000 a week. Once again, as I mentioned, like Lalana from Liverpool, if he earned that money from his old club, it would make sense. Same with Sissoko, if he was still at Spurs and earned £80,000 a week, I would understand that. But £80,000 for Watford, obviously Sissoko is far past his prime, and yes, he is a really, really good midfielder, but to surpass everyone by a country mile in terms of the amount he earns for the club, look, he's not going to be an absolute difference maker for Watford. He hasn't been an absolute difference maker for Watford so far this season. As I said, a really good player, but £80,000 for Watford. Once again, I don't think that's one of the best decisions Watford have made this season. We then move on to our second final team of the video, which, as I said, ladies and gentlemen, if you have enjoyed, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below we have kind of dropped in subscribers over the last few days so i would like to get that number up i would really appreciate it so please do make sure to do so i would really appreciate it but heading into the second last club west ham united now of course a lot of controversy around west ham united as it came out recently that kurt zuma was their highest paid player by a country mile once again in this west ham united team and he got a lot of criticism obviously there was that video released a few weeks ago about his animal abuse kicking his pet cat and it was also released that it only takes two weeks off of his salary to pay off the fine. I mean, for animal abuse, to pay a fine of £250,000 and to that just push your salary back by two weeks. Once again, the amount of money in football is absolutely crazy. But believe it or not, I'm not going to put Kurt Zuma as the most overpaid player in this West Ham United squad. At the end of the day, when he does play, I think he can still be a solid player if we just take the moral out of it. He is a decent player, obviously won a Premier League with Chelsea. At Chelsea, I thought he was a good centre-back. But to look at a player like Jan Malenko, who's brilliant for the national team, but in his time at West Ham United in the Premier League, over the last, how long has he been at West Ham United? Seven years? He's only gotten five Premier League goals and two assists in his entire Premier League career. The fact that Yermilenko is the top earning player after Kurt Zuma, once again, that's almost a bigger crime than what Kurt Zuma did. I don't know. I think that's a bit dodgy, mate. That, ladies and gentlemen, takes us to our final team of the video with Wolverhampton Wanderers. Once again, relatively easy one, as it has to be Fabio Silva at 19 years old, earns 80 
thousand pounds a week. Look, I think this kid might have a bright future ahead of him, but to become Wolves' most expensive player of all times after only having 12 senior appearances for Porto and that's his entire senior career, I don't know what it is about him that he earns 80,000 pounds a week. I don't know what made Wolves think that that's what he deserves. As I said, I'm sure he'll be a great player one day, but I haven't seen it quite yet. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for today's video in terms of who I believe is the most overpaid player at every single Premier League club. As I said, this is my opinion. If you have your own opinions about it, let me know in the comment section down below. But as I said, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to like and subscribe this video. As I said, the subscribers have dropped as of late on this channel for whatever reason, so please do subscribe. If you're not subscribed, it really does help the channel out. And obviously, talking about overpaid, you guys get this content for free, so I mean, it doesn't hurt to hit the subscribe button. But obviously, guys, thank you for all your support. Like, subscribe, all of the good things. Yeah, I thought this video was an interesting one. Cheers.